New team, same result. Tom Brady is a Super Bowl champion once again. Good evening, everyone. I'm Hannah Deneen. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the Kansas City Chiefs today in Super Bowl 55, the final score 31 to 9. Tom Brady and his partner in crime, Rob Gronkowski, connected for two touchdowns to help give the bus Bucks a boost. It's almost like they've played in the big game before, eh? That gives the Brady Gronk tandem 14 touchdowns in the postseason, which is the most by any quarterback receiver duo in NFL history. Now Tom Brady stands alone with the most Super Bowl titles in NFL history. With his seventh title, he has more than any NFL franchise, including the Steelers. It has six, and Brady's former team, the Patriots, it also has six. Tom Brady was also recognized with his fifth Super Bowl Most Valuable Player Award. The New England Patriots class act tweeting after the game tonight with a tip of the hat to the greatest of all time. Also adding, and Gronk, be careful with that trophy and nod to when he damaged one of the Patriots trophies at a batting cage. The Super Bowl was once again interrupted by a streaker. A fan on the pitch forced a stoppage in the fourth and final quarter between the Bucks and the Chiefs. The security breach became the uh, butt of countless online jokes. It's unclear what happened after this moment, but past Super Bowl streakers have been arrested and charged with misdemeanor trespass. Four well-deserving Maine health care workers enjoyed the Super Bowl right from Raymond James Stadium tonight. Here are the four. Just saw them there sitting together in the stands through social media. We've been following along all day with Kathy Bean, the manager of clinical and community health services at Northern Light Home Care and Hospice. The Mainers joined more than uh, 70 other vaccinated healthcare workers from New England, courtesy of the New England Patriots and the Kraft family. They started out the day at Gillette, flew down on the Patriots plane, watched a former Patriot win it all. <laughs> And as they enjoyed that warm Florida weather, we uh, saw some snow here in Maine. But uh, that's wrapping up right now, Mike. Yeah, we're uh, improving, Hannah. And I think that it'll still be slick into the morning tomorrow, but better than where we were okay. even just a few hours ago. So good if you uh, don't like the snow. We've got a few more small storms to talk about. I really don't see anything big coming our way, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Some steady snowfall in this forecast. All right, we'll take it. Thank you, Mike. As Mike just mentioned, with this steady snowfall came slick roads. Here's a look at those traffic cameras again. The, these shots from earlier this evening, just past 7 p.m., the Maine Turnpike Authority issued a traffic alert, alerting people to a crash on I-95 North between exit 53 in Falmouth and exit 63 in Gray. The left lane was closed up for about an hour as police cleared the scene there. And a crash in Gouldsboro Saturday night has left three people dead. The single vehicle crash happened around 8 p.m. on West Bay Road in Gouldsboro. The driver, 22-year-old Jessup Hayward of Gouldsboro, along with two passengers, Lucas Patel of Steuben and a minor from Gouldsboro, all died at the scene. The cause of the crash is still under investigation, but police say speed and alcohol appeared to have played a role. And it was a close call for another driver on Saturday evening. State police say Angel Dominguez of Dyerbrook was driving too fast for road conditions. He was traveling on Route 2 in Dyerbrook when his car flipped onto its roof and slid across both lanes before coming to a stop near a utility pole. Dominguez was the only person in the vehicle and suffered minor injuries. An update now, the main man who was reported missing near the Grand Canyon has been found. The National Park Service reported that Stephen Coleman of Portland was found safe outside of the Grand Canyon National Park. Officials say he is in good health. Grand Canyon National Park Rangers want to thank the public for their help during the search. The Maine CDC reports one additional COVID-19 related death today, as well as another uh, 154 cases of the virus here in Maine. Meanwhile, vaccination efforts continue across the state. The total number of vaccinations to be administered is now at more than 191,000. And more than 51,000 Mainers have now received both vaccine doses. 
Thousands of Mainers are still eagerly awaiting that first dose of the coronavirus vaccine, and now small Maine hospitals are doing their part to help. St. Joseph Hospital in Bangor recently kicked off a weekend vaccination clinic, administering its allotted 200 weekly doses. Uh, it will open on either Saturday or Sunday of each week. Now, 200 doses, it's a fraction of what the mass vaccination sites receive. So how these hospitals or hospitals like St. Joseph is going about deciding who gets their limited vaccines looks quite different from how the larger sites are operating. People call, get their name on a list, and then it's up to chance. Our clinics are on site. We're open to the community. They can call our community. Wow, again, uh, St. Joseph Hospital is in Bangor. Hospital officials do not recommend that you travel far from home or go vaccine chasing because it deprives people in the region of their supply. Millinocket Regional Hospital in the Katahdin area, one of the state's rural hospitals, has started vaccinating patients as well. A few days ago, it started administering the Moderna vaccine to folks in the area. Now, just like St. Joseph Hospital, Millinocket Regional Hospital keeps a long list of patients and non-patients who call or register online, and if there is a dose ready, they will reach out to them. It currently has 2,800 people on its growing waiting list. We knew there would be challenges. We this past week, the hospital administered its first 200 doses. As the state's vaccination process continues, hospitals are asking people not to sign up for vaccines at multiple hospitals or sites because it can cause issues with the state's allocation process. All eyes on Capitol Hill this week with a focus on President Biden's COVID-19 relief bill and the second impeachment of former President Donald Trump. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has the latest. Speaking to New Center Maine last weekend, Congressman Jared Golden shared his thoughts on the impeachment trial. Golden says the storming of the Capitol and the violence that ensued was, quote, clearly incited by the president and is completely unacceptable. After seeing evidence of planned coordination, he calls it flat out insurrectionist. He says he hopes the trial does not distract Congress from other pressing issues at hand, like getting out coronavirus aid. But ultimately, he says it's necessary to set a precedent. There, there are consequences. Golden adds that because of the former president's words, there is still a risk of ongoing political violence, which should not be accepted in the United States. All right, is there a special school worker in your life making a huge difference? We want to hear about them and celebrate them. We plan to do so all week long, starting after the break. Tonight, we're celebrating the start of Love School Staff Week here at New Center, Maine. All week, we will be honoring educators from across the state. And to start us off, New Center Maine's Jackie Mundry introduces us to the head custodian at Belgrade Central School. And they are certainly lucky to have him. School employees and teachers have worked hard to keep our communities safe throughout this entire past year, and we want your help celebrating them. We want you to tell us about the special people at your schools who make a difference, and then we can share the love. So go to this banner, at the top of the new Center Main app and upload a picture or video. Be sure to shoot your video sideways, horizontally, so we can share it here on TV. Tell us a little bit about your shout out. Click submit and then stay tuned. We'll be sharing the love on air, online, and on social media throughout the week. You can also check out our Love School Staff YouTube playlist on New Center Main's YouTube page. Here you can listen to school staff sharing their stories and highlighting their inspiring efforts amid the pandemic. If you spent time outside today enjoying the snow, including some furry friends, <laughs> Linda shared this video with us from Buxton. This pup clearly loving the snow, can't get enough of it. Thank you, Linda, for sharing this great moment. Oh. <laughs> and uh, then Heather sent us this video, her sweet girl from Old, or Old Orchard Beach. Callie sticking her nose in the snow. Seems to be immune from brain freeze, clearly. Uh, thank you to everyone who shared these photos and videos with us. You can see these videos and more on the Near Me section of the New Center Main app. That's also where you can share photos and videos with us.
And Mike, no one loves those near me photos more than our weather team. They kind of help you guys tell the story of each storm because you can see right out someone's window. Yeah, absolutely. The yeah. Yeah, we uh, actually got some reports, snow reports in Hannah, so that was super useful. Yeah, we love our, uh, and what is it called when there is someone who is monitoring the weather from their home? Our, our weather watchers, yes. if you will, our weather spotters. Yes. Very helpful to us. We help the National Weather Service. It, it all works pretty nicely. Okay. So maybe this will be the third weekend in a row that we're talking about snow. I know, staying busy and keeping our weather watchers slash spotters busy as well. We need it. It keeps <laughs> us out of trouble in the weather office. Uh, all right, well, we'll get to that when we get to that. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> So tonight we're going to continue our Love School staff campaign and we want to recognize Kara Flannery. Kara works in career exploration at Nokomis High School. Greetings from Warrior Nation. This is Kara. It's the day's second most exciting bowl game or first, depending on how big of a puppy lover you are. <laughs> puppy Bowl 17 was must watch TV for puppy lovers, rescue organizations and animal shelters everywhere. It featured 70 adorable pups from 22 animal shelters, including two pups right here from Maine. And if you're looking to adopt one of those Maine pups, you should know they're excellent athletes. They helped Team Rough all the way to a 73 to 69 win over Team Fluff. But Mike, I have to say Team Rough beat Team Fluff. It seems like the outcome was decided from the start. Obviously, the rough and tumble Mainers were going to win. Yeah, I mean, we knew that going into it, I feel like. just. Like we knew how the Bucks were going to win going into oh, the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah. Was too soon? Too soon? I don't know. We got into the morning commute tomorrow afternoon, though, Hannah. Should be good cleanup weather, a little bit of sunshine. It will be a bit breezy out there, but not bad overall. All right. Well, looking forward to that. Thank you, Mike. We leave you tonight with a moment of zen, this time from Knight's Pond Preserve in Cumberland Center. We'll see you next weekend. Have a great week, everyone.